Hi everyone, it's Carrie Ann and I am back um, with another watercolour um, video today. So I have done a really quick sketch, I don't know if you can see here, of the sort of idea that I want to follow for this one. I'm sticking with a theme of um, sea and flora at the moment. So I'm very much experimenting with the idea of combining the sea life, um, obviously living in Seaton. Um, I love the idea of sea life and things like that. So combining sea life with the flowers because flowers is something I've always loved drawing. I love um, heading out for walks um, into the sort of the local meadow areas and things. So I just thought that um, combine my two two loves really, and see what I can create um, using flowers together with sea life. So it's very much at the experimental stages at the moment. Um, so you get a peep into my mind and how it works. Um, this is something that I would have probably been better doing in acrylic um, because of the layering. Um, you'd have probably, with the ideas that I've got, I'd have probably got a, an e it would have been easier to create the, fe the effects that I want to create um, if I'd have done this in acrylic. But I just thought I would set myself a challenge and have a go at doing it in watercolour. Um, so this is really just a video just showing you the stages I go through before creating finished pieces. Um, this is a, is a practice paper that I'm working on. So this is SAA uh, watercolour practice paper. And um, I'm just using this to set the ideas out really and see what I can do with the ideas and how I can bring them together if they're going to work um, or if the sort of the layering effect that I want to create is going to be definitely better in um, acrylic. Um, so let's just bring the little turtle to life. We're just going to bring him in here. So what I might do is fade out the, fade out the green as I come in a bit and layer over the top when that's dry. The flowers. I don't know if you can actually see the under sketch that I've got here, but essentially what I wanted to do was have um, the, the sort of turtle and then the back of him covered in flowers. Um, so I'm just experimenting really to see if I can do that. I'm using a mixture of greens because when I then come to layer, um, I'm going to actually um, combine the greens and drop in extra colours um, of the greens. Um, but when I get to this sort of part, I'm just going to fade it out with clean water because I want a little bit of the colour underneath, um, but not so much that it changes the flowers and the um, colours that I want to use for the flowers. So, Obviously the way I paint, I've said this before, but the way I paint isn't necessarily how you should paint. It's not necessarily... Um, the best way to paint or anything like that. This is just how I do it um, and it works for me and I enjoy painting and that's really what it's about for me. I just want to make sure that I share my love of painting with you guys so that you can have a go and try different ways of doing it um, and just see what it is that you can create. I just find it really relaxing and yeah, it's just a lovely thing to sit and do on a day like today. The sun's out, I'm in the studio. It's quite early at the moment, so I haven't got the bright sun on me yet, which is quite nice. So obviously, can you see where the water has pushed the pigment to the edge there? I could either leave it like that if I like the effect, or I can move it around as long as I'm quick enough that I don't leave a mark on the page. I can move it around slightly, maybe add in a little bit more over the top, just to bring it together a little bit more. Okay, I'm just going to leave that like that for now. And because the flowers will probably come up here, it will break off this part where it's a bit too connected for me. So let's bring some more green down here. So I'm doing um, wet on dry for this at the moment. Sometimes I work wet in wet when I want the colours to sort of flow. Um, but at the moment, for this early sketch idea, just really getting the colour down just to be really quick to see if this idea is going to come together or not. I'm using a size 10 brush at the moment, so quite a big brush really um, for, for what I'm using. 
Usually I work in a six or a two, um, but I'm using a bigger brush just to get the colour down at the moment. Obviously with the practice paper, it's not the best paper in the world um, for the effects, especially if you're using a lot of water. It, it doesn't like to be completely drenched. Um, so obviously when I come to you do my final piece, um, if I like the idea, then I'll probably use um, a better paper, maybe a Sanford's or something like that, Buckingford possibly. Um, it's good for certain pieces, but, but certainly not the best paper that I've come across. So I'm just bleaching that out now, bringing it that way. Bring it that way, it bleaches out a bit. I quite like the texture effects that you get when you um, start to move it around. It looks good for the skin of the... So what I would need to do now is let it dry. So if I was doing this properly, I would let that dry completely because what I wouldn't want to do is start bringing colours here onto this where it's still damp because they'll bleed out too much. Um, but for, for the sake of being a sketch and for the sake of this just being a quick little video um, I think what I'll do is I'll just start with the flowers in the centre and, and hope um, that we can um, let it dry enough to be able to start working up here. So again I've got no real plan yet as to the colour palette that I'm going to work in so what I usually do is start swatching the colours to the side of the painting um, so up here um, or down here, write the names of them so I remember what I'm working with um, and then I will remember which colours I liked and which went well together um, and which didn't. Um, but just for now I'm just going to use a cadmium red and a cadmium yellow just to give myself an orange and I'm just going to create some little flowers here. And I'm just pulling them around and uh, if you've watched my videos before um, or if you're familiar with watercolours you'll know that obviously the colours that you see here when they're wet um, lighten up usually uh, when it dries so but if you see the colours and you think oh they're really really bright um, they will lighten up slightly when the watercolour dries so I'm just playing around with the idea of some petal shapes. Obviously I've got the ability to go back and fill up some gaps as well so I don't want to do too much straight away. I'm going to go back to the big brush now. I'm just going to create a, a pinky shade I think. Let's see. Let's see what shade we can create with a bit of, a bit of this one. So this one's going to be permanent rose. See if we can start to build a, a rose on this side. So this is probably not the colours that I'll use in the final piece. And obviously I will add my overlay as well, so that will add a, a different effect. Can you see where I haven't let it dry enough, it starts bleeding in? So some people like that effect, um, some people don't. It's very much a personal thing. So I'm actually happy with how that's come together. I quite like the way that's worked there. So I'm going to use a bit more of the pigment and just bring it in slightly so it's darker. And I'm just going to add another one of these rose shapes up here. A bit more water just to help it flow around a bit more. When I get to here I'm going to leave gaps because I don't want those flowing into each other at the moment. I might change my mind, who knows. So where I've left the white that's to help create the effect of the sort of rose shape. Um, what I might come back and do is, is bring in some water later so that it's not quite white behind, it's a different shade. I, I'm deciding as I go at the moment, as I say this is a very very new idea. So what I want next is maybe a purpley shade, I'm not sure. So 
thinking of adding something that's going slightly up there but I'm well aware that it's still quite damp so I'm not sure yet that's too blue so let's bring in a bit more of the red to make that more of a purpley shade so hopefully it's quite a luscious purple so let's see yes that one will work so what I'm doing here is doing sort of like um marks that I'd make if it was lavender can you see how that purple all lightens up so as so when I come and do the pen overlay you'll get the idea of, of where this lavender starts to come together so I've done a few pieces going that way I think I might have one going that way as well. Bring that here. That dry there like that. So when I come to sort of filling the gaps is also when I start thinking about what colours I want next to each other. So I quite like this purple um, being next to this pink here. So I might do some more um, purpley colour over here. Um, I think a yellow, a nice bright yellow might might work here. So let's try something like. So obviously those are going to be bigger. And I've got the purple bleeding into there. I don't mind too much about that. Let's see if we. I'm going to pull this together to make it have extra little petals. So it's more like a dahlia than it is um, another one of these here. Let's see. Could have been a sunflower, couldn't it? I could have done it as a sunflower. Let's add another one here. Obviously, this is the base colour. So when I start adding my fine liner, that's when I start sort of showing what the flowers might be. If I want them to be abstract flowers, that's fine. But if I want to make them more lifelike, more um, relevant to actual flowers, then I've got that opportunity when I add the fine liner layer. So I'm going to take a little bit of that purple out from the yellow there. And I'm just going to bring a bit more of the yellow onto now I don't mind the colours coming in too much, it's just that I didn't want it to be completely blended together. So let's add another yellow here, I think. You'll see I use white space quite a bit, um, just to help define what, what it is that I'm working on. I'm quite happy with those three like that but I think what I need to do is start thinking about these here now I'm not sure about the shade colour there can you see the purple's going back in I'll sort that in a minute I'm not sure about that orange at the moment I'm still unsure if I like that orange effect this is where I should have done my palette first because if I had done my palette first and decided on the colours that are going together I would have got to this stage and known what colours I wanted next to each other, but that's me being impatient. <laughs> so I'm just going to add some marks here so it looks like I've got some more of these orange ones behind. I've actually used a lighter shade of orange this time. And you'll probably notice I'm not doing them quite so rigid as I did with these ones. Um, and that's just because when I go back over with the um, fine liner later you won't notice so much on those ones so I'm just mixing up a bit more of that orange shade I quite like this lighter one dropping in a bit of the darker so they don't look too different so let's add a bit more of the orange over here and a bit more here okay so I'm happy with that so now we've got to fill this area down here. So obviously when I did the pencil marks I had some foliage ideas 
um, but I haven't added any foliage in yet. I probably could get away with adding some down there, but I'm not too sure yet. Um, so I'm thinking maybe a bit more of the purple. Um, so let's have a look at some of this purple here. I think maybe if I add it like this, then we might get away with having it come down. Maybe if it's come down past and behind. So here I've done it with more water, less pigment. Um, so it's a different shade and then I'm just dropping in some more of the pigment there. I'm going to come slightly over the top of the rose and I'm going to start now bringing the shape in. Now I could turn the paper around which would probably be the easier way to do it but I'm just going to keep going with this at the moment. Add a few more. I've changed from lavender now to more of a. I'm not sure what we're going to go with, what we're going to call this one when we get there. But we're just moving it around for now. So I'm definitely going to need some foliage to bring this all together. And um, so let's start thinking about the colours that we're going to use because obviously we want the colours to be slightly different to the turtle. So let's have a play around with some colours here. Um, and again, this foliage is just to experiment with which styles of foliage are going to work better. So I'm just putting it in quite light to begin with. And if I want to come back in and make it darker, like I'm doing here, then I can do that. Drop in a bit more colour. I think it's going to need a little bit here. Here. Not sure I like this bit here, I might change that. So I'm going to definitely bring some more foliage down here. I think what could work quite well there is if that was berries, maybe. So I'm just going to start allowing these now to mix together might be worth having a bit of the green in amongst here. So you'll notice now that I'm letting them mix together a little bit more um, and that's because I will bring it back out with the fine liner. So I've got the base colour that I want and then I'm going to let it come back to life with the fine liner. So I'm just going to lift that bit of purple it again. So at the moment it does look very messy. Um, and that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to bring it back out again when I do my fine line. So this is where I'm using now just the tip of the watercolour brush. Just to start adding layering and detail on the foliage here. I'm using a different shade as well and that will give it a bit more depth by having Oh, I'm wondering about adding a few little berries in. Oh, I don't know yet. Let's see. Let's keep going. Building it up. I definitely need to get some more greens. I don't feel like I have enough green shades mixed here at the moment. Let's bring that in there. A few more drops of the green in here. More drops in there. Just bring a few.
gone quiet again, haven't I? Concentrating, deciding if I'm liking the way this is turning out. I think I am. I think it's sort of coming together. Right, now let's start thinking about adding some patches of green over the top. Again, these will lighten up. This is just to give that illusion of the texture of the set of skin. Not sure if this is quite what it should be like, but we'll see. We'll go with it. And I'm going on to what should be nearly dry. So. You see, I'm just picking up the colour where it was too strong. Hopefully you can start to see the idea come to life now where I was going with this whole um, sea life and flowers. I always get to this stage and I think, oh, I hate it, stop. <laughs> but then what tends to happen is as it dries, it starts to come together and then I think, oh, actually, if I just add fine liner over the top here and a bit there, then I can actually bring it back again and pull it back to a level where I like it again. But I think we're all a bit guilty of that. We get to the stage and think, oh, we've ruined it or it's not gone how I wanted it. But one thing I do have to keep remembering is the first piece doesn't have to be the best piece. It can be... Um, you know, there can be parts of it you like, parts of it you don't like, um, and you can just try and not think that every piece that you create um, has to be that final piece. And I, I think that's a lesson that we all kind of should take on board, really, Even at every level that we work at. Um, so as I do this now nearly, nearly full time, um, this is my main job now, um, and. I, I should be, maybe a lot of people think, oh, well, you should be at the stage where everything you do is perfect. It's not, <laughs> not at all. Um, I'm always going to be creating things that aren't quite what I think they should be. Um, and there's going to be different people that love what you do. There's going to be different people that really don't like your style of, of art. But, but that's the thing with art. Art is very, very subjective. Everybody has different things they like and different things they don't like. And you really must just stay true to what, what you enjoy and what you want to be putting out there. And there's going to be someone who's going to love what you do. And just remember that, you know, not everyone will, but there will be people that absolutely love what you create. So put it out there, let people know what you do and keep doing what you do and find your own style because it will be worth it in the end. Um, if you just keep putting it out there, I'd say. So I'm just going to finish adding these little texture patches to the turtle. And this is all lightening up now, so you'll start to see how he's coming together. And hopefully you're getting a rough idea now of what it is that I'm doing. And I will finish the video in a second. Um, let this dry and then I'll add the fine liner overlay and maybe I'll do a video of the fine liner over as well so you get a bit of an idea of of why I do that and what I do with the fine liner overlay and obviously then I'll add a link to the finished picture as well just gonna bring that bit more together. so yeah he's coming together um, I'm not sure if I need to do the patches up here or not I'm going to leave that I think for now, just add a few more layer shades of it, so I'm going to leave that bit there. So there we go, the start of my Flawna 